Welcome to the Daily Fantasy Flex Podcast, the NBA edition. It is Friday, December 16th. I am your host, Brian, and I am joined, uh, as usual, by my co-host, Jay. Justin's not able to join us today, but uh, me and Jay are going to hold down the fort and break down this Friday 10-game slate. Jay, how's it going, man? Good, man. Uh, excited to break down this slate. It's, it doesn't really have the feel, after looking at it for a while, it doesn't really have the feel of a 10-game slate. Um, yeah, it doesn't. It's like you'd think it'd be like a five or sixer, but I'm excited to break it down. Uh, definitely want to give a shout out to Craig Sager. Uh, yeah. From what he's done in the last 30 years. You know, NBA is going to be a little different going forward without him. So shout out Sager. Yeah, Sager for sure. Yeah, very sad news, but uh, very good at his job and some guy that we'll miss yeah. for sure. Uh, but you're you're right. Going back to the slate, I mean, it's it's a it's a slate that it's not really juicy anywhere. You know, we have the highest total games, the Rockets, and the Pelicans, and that'll be one of the two games we break down. But then the rest of them, it's just it's a lot of like Eastern Conference, like just slugfests. I mean, you know, <laughs> like Pistons Wizards with a low total, um, Hornets Celtics with a low. I mean, it's just all these sort of games where like they're just sort of mid tier plays, and unfortunately, there's not really like those three or four West Coast games that have excellent uh, high totals that we can target because Clippers are playing the Heat, so that's down. Mavericks and the Jazz and, like, the two slow space teams. That's the best game. I'm surprised you don't want to talk about that one. That's a thriller. Thriller, yeah. That's, it reminds me of, like, a, a Big Ten game. <laughs> no, it's true, yeah, where it's going to be, like, 30 to 28. 29-24 <laughs> is my <laughs> prediction. <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah. Oh, what 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 a slate! So yeah. we're gonna do our best to to break down uh, this slate. We're we're gonna talk about two games, just sort of uh, entry ones. I, I think the one that we do need to discuss for sure is the Rockets Pelicans. That is sort of the outlier when it comes to the total. Um, and then the other game we'll discuss. I think um, one of the the better real life games. And if you're targeting sort of the East Coast games, maybe this one has some plays that uh, you know you can get. Excited about it's going to be the Hawks at the Raptors. Uh, I think in particular there is a very, very strong play from that game. So we'll definitely hit on that for sure. Uh, but first, I'll kick to you, Jay, and you can give us some notable injury news. Yeah, injuries have been pretty busy. It kind of feels like we're in March already with players resting, uh, injuries popping up, different staring laps. So it's been interesting. But for tonight, we have quite a few. If uh, start off, Cantavius Caldwell Pope's questionable uh, with a right knee contusion. Markeith is a game-time decision with the sore left foot. Uh, Jeremy Lin is also a game-time decision with back tightness. Uh, Nikola Vucevic, um, Vogel said he'll give it a go tonight. So assume he's, you know, in the uh, coming off the bench, he's fine uh, with that lower back contusion. Kemba is out. That's probably the biggest news on this slate for personal reasons. He's expected back next game. Isaiah Thomas has returned after I think missing three games. Um, Let's see, we got uh, Ben McLemore was upgraded to questionable this morning from doubtful. Uh, so, so no more Garrett Temple, which is probably a good thing. Uh, Rudy Gay is still doubtful with a strained right hip flexor. To, uh, Boogie, DeMarcus Cousins fully expected to play after scheduled rest last game. Uh, James Ennis has been upgraded to probable. Um, and then Chandler Parsons and Mike Conley have been upgraded from out to doubtful. Um, I think there's like a decent chance Conley will actually play, but um, not not as of now. Uh, Tyreek Evans sitting the second leg of a back-to-back tonight, so he's out. Uh, Tim Frazier, of course, expected to miss seven to ten days. Uh, Nerlens Noel is probable. Joel Embiid was downgraded to questionable. He didn't participate in shoot-around today, so that's something uh, pretty big to monitor. Uh, Dario Saric is probable. Luke Umba Mute was listed out, but Doc Rivers said there's a chance he could play, so we'll consider him uh, questionable but closer to doubtful. Tyler Johnson, questionable with an illness. Um, Berea, Dirk, Bogut still out. Salam Madri, questionable. And George Hill ruled out again with that toe that's just, I don't know, did, like did they amputate it or something? It seems like it at this point, right? It's wild, man. Yeah, but he's out again. So, Oh, man, that yeah, that jazz Mavericks game. Whew. I, I know it's, it just gets better and better right um so all right so let's jump into these games uh the, again the two that we're going to discuss are going to be uh the pelicans visiting houston playing the rockets and then the hawks are on the road up in toronto to face the raptors uh we'll start with the pelicans rockets game this one's sort of the juicy one of the night uh has the highest total of 219 
Uh, and the Rockets, sort of as usual when they're on the slate, they're projected for the highest team total at 115.25. They are uh, you know, pretty, pretty sizable favorites, biggest favorites on the slate at, at uh, 11 and a half right now. It's moved up just a little bit uh, this morning. So, um, you know, another interesting one where you try to figure out what to do with James Harden in, in a double-digit game. Uh, but total is very, very juicy. I ha- have an a interesting stat for you, Jay, that I, that I saw on Twitter. Um, let me pull it up here. Uh, Houston lineup of Harden, Pat Bev, Ariza, Rhino, and Clint Capella has a net rating of plus 25.7 in December. That's over eight games in 100 minutes played. Uh, and I think this, just, this is a big deal um, just because – really since Beverly's return, they've just been crushing teams. And so I, I think, you know, you look at this 11 and a half point spread and that seems, it seems high, but it, it seems about right. You know, that this, this could turn into a potential blowout. Ever since Beverly has come back, they've been a little better defensively. And Houston's actually looked like a really good sort of top four team in the West. Yeah, man. I mean, I, this is what I expected. I was really, really high on Houston coming in just with their you know, spacing and, and the shooters they got. You know, like defense isn't going to matter as much. But now you have Beverly. I think they're 8-0 in those games you mentioned this month. Um, and, yeah, they're playing really well. Their their D rating is seventh in the league over over that same time frame. So, yeah, there's a lot to like. Beverly's playing, you know, top-notch defense. He's making a run for defensive player of the year, first guard since Gary Payton. Um, huge difference maker, of course, for this team, like you mentioned, with the starting lineup. So, yeah, I mean, the big thing with this game – is of course the blowout and that's something to monitor because yeah they have been blowing out teams quite a bit lately we got the pelicans on a back-to-back uh, second leg the traveling so it's a tough spot but you look kind of at this slate and like boogie's another high price guy but he's going against marcus so you have these spots where it's difficult to kind of spend up so you're looking at the two guys and that's anthony davis and harden and just looking at this team total Knowing that Harden's floor is is still really high, uh, high enough, especially even if he only plays three quarters, he's not going to be value at that price. But you're still getting something, and then you have it, the ceiling, of course, which is you know seventies. So I think you still look at Harden uh, really, really hard on the slate. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're just looking at matchups, and this is why we talked about it being sort of an ugly slate because there's there's no really high price studs that really just massively stand out. Um, maybe with the exception of, of Davis and Harden in this game, you know, if you just look at the the top seven price players, so you know, which look at the guys who are above nine k on Fanduel. So these are the potential studs that you would want to roster. Only Davis and Harden have a positive opponent plus minus mark. So um, you know, you have Boogie, uh, you know, in, in this really bad matchup against Memphis. You know, Giannis and and, and Wall and, and Chris Paul and Whiteside all have fairly negative uh, opponent plus minus is some of our a little worse than other Chris Paul specifically, but um, you know, like none of these guys are, are really like, if you're just looking from a matchup and price point, you know, looking for cash games, it, it's sort of hard to get excited. So you really might be a, a slate where to just, th- these are the guys, you know, maybe you potentially stack them if you can afford them. That's a little tougher on DraftKings, but yeah. uh, on FanDuel, you know, just sort of stack this game and, and hopefully they go back and forth. Do you think that you'll try to get both in for FanDuel? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think so. Um, Anthony Davis this season, he has a, a four game sample size of second leg of a road back to back and he has a minus 13.7 plus minus on DraftKings. So he's only averaging just 38.75 on those road back to back. So it's a bit tougher. You know, he played 39 minutes last night, I believe, and been projected at 39 again because it, he plays all game basically. Um, you know, very consistent minutes, but it's the production that I'm worried about coming off the, a lot of minutes the night before and traveling. So I'm a, a little bit more on the hard inside. Um, but like Fandle with Sessions, of course, and, and a couple other guys, small forward, you don't really need to pay up, um, depending on maybe if, if Dwayne Wade rests, then I would definitely try to get Jimmy Butler in there harder than I am now. But I think on Fandle, you can make a case of playing both probably with, uh, with all the value. Yeah, and so you, but you prefer Harden. I, I definitely would prefer Harden over Davis. Yeah, yeah. So he's the he's sort of the the must have, uh, you know, top price guy for you on the slate. Yep, definitely. And does the does the blowout concern you? Um, or I mean, like if you just I mean, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, definitely. But, but I mean, 
But if you look like you, we're talking about this, this sort of recent sample size, I mean, even going back to mid November, he's been under f- like 45 fantasy points once. So, I mean, like you're just talking about a guy just with a massive, massive floor, regardless of, um, I mean, he, he, you know, put up 62 against the Nets a couple games ago. I mean, the Kings, uh, he put up 46. So, I mean, this is a guy who I think is a little safer uh, than most studs, even yeah. in, in a large, you know, like he's sort of, like Durant has always been sort of safe, even in a high, high spread game. And I think Harden is sort of similar to that. Right, I don't mind definitely going. is. Yeah, I mean, his usage is absurd, and you're getting triple double near it by the third quarter. So if he's right. fourth, he's still got. And, and you got to think like he's the reason he's going to have his hand in everything. So if they're up twenty going into the fourth, you know, he's likely already at forty points. Um, you know, at least. So you look at this game, and like it's not a difficult matchup. It's an easy game for the Rockets to just crush. So it's not like you're worried about a spread against a team that can actually slow him down. This isn't really the case. So, yeah, Harden, Harden for sure is, is the guy you know, I'm most likely to spend up on. And then looking at, at some of these other Houston guys, uh, I, I don't think there's a whole lot there on the on the New Orleans side other than um, than Davis. But if you, and you can disagree with me that if you want. But just looking at uh, you know this this same sample size with with in December when we have Patrick Beverly back, they're sort of at full strength with Houston. Uh, I pulled up the the DraftKings plus minus values for these starters. Patrick Beverly uh, plus eight plus minus uh, on average in the last eight games. Ryan Anderson plus 5.4, Eric Gordon plus 5.1, Ariza plus 2.8. So, I mean, all of these starters have, have exceeded value. They've all been valuable. So um, I know that their prices are coming up a little bit, but, um, you know, where do you stand on the rest of the starters in such a high total game here? Yeah, Bev's price came up a little bit. And we have guys, Sergio Rodriguez, 5K on FanDuel, um, Ramon Sessions, cheap, of course. So, I don't have the desire to play Beverly like I have in the past where you're really looking to just save at any point guard under like 6,500 or something. And so he's still, I still think he's probably underpriced, um, but I don't have as much of a necessity to roster him. So it's kind of like a, I don't like him enough for tournaments and I'm not really lo- likely to go him in cash. I think the other guys make a case. I mean, I, I want some exposure to to this team total in this game. You know, it's a soft defense. So um, I think uh, Ariza makes sense. I think Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon uh, all warrant tournament exposure. Kind of just the, Capella's minutes are just um, the, the upside's not there. Uh, and then the floor's not there that he's not really on my radar much anymore right now. Yeah, that's definitely fair. I mean, the, the problem with, with all of these guys is that um, they're probably all cash playable. Um, I, I don't think that – or at least I think Gordon and Patrick Beverly are, are cash playable. I think Ryan Yeah, that is, that is definitely cash playable. It's just a matter of – But the, the other options is the issue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At his price, there are better options in the slate, especially with, you know, Kemba's News and some of these other guys. And, um uh, point guard in the next game, which we'll get to, I think is a really, really strong cash play. So um, I, I don't think you have to go with them in cash games, but it's also that, that's sort of the problem is this has this high total game, uh, but their uh, you know, sort of distribution of of, mm-hmm. of uh, fantasy outcomes um, are, are very narrow. So I mean, Patrick Beverly, Eric Gordon, are guys that you typically want to roster in cash games uh, because they don't have super high ceilings, but they have pretty safe floors in this matchup. Um, so then it, it just gets to a point where it's just sort of tough, tough to play them. Um, right. so, I, so I think maybe, you know, maybe some exposure to, to Rhino, who has a little bit of higher ceiling yeah. uh, or just more volatile, um, uh, you know, distribution of outcomes, I, I think might be a, a nice move. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think Ariza is close yeah. to cash game playable too because small forward, we'll get into, it's pretty yeah. ugly tonight, really bad. So he's definitely like in the mix and then, yeah, on the Pelican side, I mean, mainly looking at Anthony Davis. Um, don't like Drew against Beverly. Just mentioned Beverly's up there for Defensive Player of the Year. Really focusing on that this season. Um, it's interesting with uh, Tyreek out. I know he barely played last night, but with Frazier out too. Um, so there's some intrigue for me with uh, like Langs and Galloway. I know Buddy Heald, you know, hit five threes last night. He's been shooting it really well from beyond the arc, but I think um, those guys are, are a little intriguing to me in tournaments just with their price. And, um, you know, you, you think if this game does get out of hand and Galloway kind of runs that second unit quite a bit, then 
he's he's got a little bit of upside comparative to his price. Yeah, I mean, he's he's the only guy that I would even sort of consider with with uh, yeah. you know, sort of small exposure. He did have thirty fan points a couple games ago against the Warriors, and, and again, it's really just sort of feasting on the second units with uh, with Heal and those guys having to move up without without Reek. So um, I, I don't mind that, but I, again, it's going to be minim, minimal exposure, I think, to these guys other than uh, other than Davis. And it, really, this game could be a blowout. I mean, Houston, I think, is sure. far superior to. Uh, to these guys. Um, all right, let's move on to this next game, um, which is going to be the Hawks and the Raptors. This game is in Toronto. Um, and, you know, the guy that I've been hitting at, which I think is a, you know, just a really, really strong cash play um, is Kyle Lowry. Is he, he a guy that is, you know, like, do you, do you share that sentiment that he's just a really, really strong cash game play at point guard today? Yeah, I think on, um, he's cheaper on uh, DK, right? It's just a smidge, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 86, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I like Lowry a lot, um, obviously at home too. So, yeah, he's in a spot. You know, we've like, we like him most nights when he doesn't have a tough matchup. It's just a very high floor, very safe. You know, he's playing on a team that's the best offense of all time. Uh, it's, it's just crazy watching this offense just explode every night. Um, you know, number one in offense efficiency. Um, so yeah, I'm big on Lowry. I, I want to piece this game. I like this game a lot in that I think Atlanta can keep this one close enough to where we could kind of see a potential shootout. So not only are you paying for Lowry's floor and cash games, you know, if you're big on this game, you get him and then you get other guys and you kind of hope this game pops off and Lowry kind of reaches that ceiling as well. Yeah, for sure. I, so I, I think I like Lowry a little bit on Fanduel, but it's just because the price of the other guys, like if I'm just looking at, um, you know, who, who else I would roster and cash. I mean, uh, if you're looking at DraftKings, I, I think, um, you know, that's that's where you really get into the Ramon sessions is really interesting starting for, for Kemba because he's down at like, what, three six three seven range, uh, and he's up at four three on Fanduel, which I don't think that means he's unplayable by any means. Uh-huh. But it does make it interesting where, um, you know, if you don't necessarily need the value or you could get it elsewhere within Ariza or, or some somewhere at other positions, I think getting up to Lowry – um, on, on FanDuel is definitely definitely worth it, in my opinion. Uh, you know, th- there's other guys on, on DraftKings, Isaiah, um, you know, in a matchup against Sessions <laughs> is uh, yeah. is uh, only 7K uh, for Boston. And, uh, yeah, yeah so that's a really, really nice matchup. John Wall is uh, in a nice match, especially if KCP is out. Um, he's, yeah. he's confirmed playing. Just oh, he's – okay, gotcha. But even still, uh, I think that this is – it's fairly – you know, not, not a disastrous matchup for John yeah. His price at 8-9 is not bad on DK. So, right. um, yeah. so I think I prefer Lowry for those reasons a little bit better on, on FanDuel just because all of those other guys are priced up, whereas he's there's not really a huge difference between his DK and FanDuel salary. Right. Yeah, and you're mainly looking – this team's offense is so deep now. It's You're still just kind of primarily looking at the backcourt um, with Lowry and DeRozan. DeRozan's still – Probably slightly underpriced on DK. I think he's worth a look, but probably makes more tournament play for me. Um, just with kind of trying to fit in Harden or, or whoever, and not really having the money to spend up at shooting guard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, I mean, are any other guys we're looking at little little two pat love at all? Um, I don't know. Maybe it depends how this game plays out, and if he started the second half last game, but. Uh, Casey said that he's not going to do that again unless the matchup dictates it. So he's kind of going to play it by, you know, if, if um, say Cam's just getting crushed, then we put two pad in, but it's not worth it for me in that I don't see his ceiling and like, I'm not going to cash him. So um, he would kind of have to start and, and have a bigger role in this offense. Um, it's just deep, man. Like everybody's contributing. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, we had Damari Carroll for a bit there. Uh, who was a nice value play, and he's still really cheap, but it's the same thing. It's There's so many hands to feed here, that so many mouths to feed that I don't know if I'm comfortable really cashing Carroll right now, um, especially we have so many other cheap small forward options. So I think you look at Lowry, one, cash viable, DeRozan, more tournament viable. Um, Valanciunas, it's just the, the minutes are, are a big concern there. So, yeah, that's kind of – what I'm looking at with this team, which is weird because their offense, you know, they drop 120 a game. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same sort of uh, Houston issue. You know, it's like bit, yeah. it's, there's so many guys and they're they're so efficient right now where it's, yeah. um, you know, everyone's going to put up 20, 20 to 25 fantasy points, which which is fine in cash games, but not necessarily at their prices, yeah. but not necessarily great for tournaments. So I, I think you're right. I think Lowry and, and DeRozan. I, I will say that I think, um, you know, if, if you want to go Carroll, I, I'm fine with him on FanDuel. At four, two. yeah, he's he's really cheap. For yeah. Sure, yeah. He's the mix definitely going. You know, one cheap guy for sure on small forward on Fandle. Yeah. All right. So uh, so let's get to the other side of this game, which is going to be uh, the Atlanta side. Um, you know, theoretically, uh, this seems like a really nice game for for Dwight Howard against the Toronto team that really really struggles down low. Uh, really, that's been the trend this year. They their front court. Defense has been pretty awful ever since Bismack Biombo left. I think uh, Bebe has has done a little bit better uh, lately, but um, you know I, I don't yeah. think that is a matchup we we need to be concerned about. So I, I'm not sure that that Howard at his price points are a guy you're looking at in cash. But I think he's a, a really nice tournament option in a game that you said that you know has some potential to uh, to go over their total a little bit here. Yeah, I love a lot of these guys for tournaments just in that fact that. If Atlanta keeps this one close, they're going to score a lot of points because Toronto's offense, you have to keep up. They score so so often, so efficiently that you have a lot of ceiling if this game stays close the whole way through and you know towards the end. So Dwight is definitely one of my, my favorite tournament plays. I think Millsap is definitely um, a cash option uh, on FanDuel as your, you know, one of your two power forwards. I still like him a lot. You're getting a high floor there. He's similar in the realm of Lowry where I really trust his floor and then he also has that pretty high ceiling with the steals and blocks that he contributes, you know, double double potential double double. So right. those helps, you know, my favorite all around guy, of course. And then Sch- uh, Schro- Schroeder is such a tough guy because I mean he's been crushing lately. I know, he's, he's I know. For three, us, yeah, three of his last four games, he's gone over forty DraftKings points. Uh, he was at thirty six in that in that third one. Um, of uh, the four, so I mean he's just been absolutely crushing. He's averaged yeah. a ten point. 4-2 plus minus on DK over his last 10 games. Uh, the one game that he didn't hit value was on the road at Toronto. So that's the problem. You know, he's been crushing everyone, but he struggled uh, a lot in that game against uh, against Lowry. I mean, he shot the ball okay, but um, really his his peripheral statistics, his, uh, um, his assists and everything were down. The Hawks just didn't quite play as well with him. So yeah. uh, that's the problem. He's been crushing, but the, the one sample – uh, that that we have with uh, with Toronto on the road, he struggles. So that that, that makes him a hard a hard player to, to to dissect. I think. Yeah, I think you want exposure on DK though. That soft price, uh, sixty six hundred. You know, like I said, kind of getting a piece of this game. He's definitely one of the options there. You no know, primary option really on the Hawks. Uh, you know, you go those big three maybe and go all three and kind of game stack this a little bit. But Toronto has been the second best matchup to opposing point guards a season and plus minus um, when they're projected with at least 15 points. So I'm not necessarily scared away off that one game, uh, especially if the assists weren't there. Um, you know, he's been diming a lot more lately. So like I said, I mean, you're kind of just playing in that the Hawks keep up with Toronto and score a lot of points. This team's just been really bad lately. I mean, they've completely collapsed their defense. You know, they have Hardaway in the starting lineup based more off the bench. I, I mean, they, I think they're like, two and eight in their last 10 games or something. And yeah. I don't know, they probably shouldn't have given Bays more $70 million. Yeah, he looked really bad lately. I, I, I don't think he's that bad. I think, I, I don't know what the, the reason. I don't think he's $70 million. No, I mean, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I agree there. But, but yeah, I don't think he's as bad as he's been playing. But so that, that's the question. You know, he's been playing 13, 14 minutes off the bench here, uh, you know, ramping back up with, with his stuff. Um, and Tim Hardaway has been – you know, a guy that looks at least like sort of interesting in tournaments. And, yeah. you know, Schroeder's been interesting with, with Bazemore out. If, if Bazemore gets up in 20 minutes, does that cut into Schroeder or, or Hardaway? Or wh- where does it cut into? I mean, I don't th- – he's already confirmed coming off the bench for at least two more games. So I'm expecting him to stay a, a pretty limited off the bench. More towards 10 than 20? Yeah. Well, no, I think I think he'll be right at 20 for okay. sure. Okay. Um, Around that, but yeah, I mean, Corver's been playing big minutes. Uh, we got Tavo's been playing big minutes, and, and Tavo's a guy who's been producing really well lately. 
Um, he's in the mix too of, of kind of a Ross book guy to me. So this team, it's crazy that, I mean, you look at this team like fantasy wise, you're like, okay, Schroeder's been crushing, Bill has been crushing, Dwight's had big games. And then you're like, you, you know, you're like, oh, they must be doing really well. And then they lose every game. It's like, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to compare the two real life and fantasy because I don't care about real life. You know, I, I don't even care. So for me, it's like these three guys are putting up numbers. That's right. Right. It's going to continue to happen. So uh, they're mainly tournament plays. I think Millsap approaches cash game territory on FanDuel. I think so, too. Uh, that, that's definitely fair. All right, let's move on to our, uh, our position breakdown here. Uh, we'll start over uh, with point guard again. Uh, and interestingly, point guard position, uh, you know, historically last year, uh, we talked about this on the pod all the time, that centers were just so discounted on DraftKings uh, as opposed to FanDuel. And uh, right now, point guards are becoming pretty discounted relative to FanDuel. If you just look at some of the bargain ratings of these guys, um, you know, they have really high bargain ratings on DraftKings relative to FanDuel. I'm, I'm not sure if that's just sort of a blip in pricing right now or if that's a, just sort of a trend of, of things that are happening right now. But on DraftKings, it's really tough because there are, you know, I think – I mean, if, if I'm just sort of running through, like, Isaiah, John Wall, Sessions, and Lowry, those are four guys that I feel pretty comfortable in cash. Um, I guess, you know, we need to decide, you know, how we would rank those, but I would be fine with any of those, really. Yeah, it's – yeah, for sure. I get what you're saying with the, the pricing. And we see it with KCP, too, coming off an injury, his price is you know, like a season low, I think 4,100 or whatever it is on DK. Isaiah – dropped 1,100 um, because he missed three games. So it's the algorithm that's uh, producing these stats. You know, it's a combination of a lot of factors, of course, but I think ownership and recent production are, are a percentage of it, which you know, he's been out. So that dropped his price. And, yeah, it's like uh, normally I wouldn't be looking at Isaiah, you know, his first game back from injury, um, even though they were very cautious, it, it appears, with – with him sitting out, but but at seven k, yeah, like seven k is is kind of a joke. Um, so like assuming no restrictions, which which I don't expect, it's it's really hard not to go that. It, I mean, but then like, yeah, I mean, sessions is a lot for me. Um, you know, for sure, I think that's that's a extreme. yeah, yeah. Like, I agree. He, yeah. he started five games last year, and he averaged thirty five Fanduel points uh, per game. So. Uh, it was a different team, of course, you know, on the Wizards, but like uh, he's played for like eight teams and he's always produced. Or it feels like yesterday when he got uh, 24 dimes that one game. I'll, I'll always remember that. Do you remember <laughs> yeah, that? I do, I do. That was, uh, that was interesting. That was eight years ago. I like looked it up. I was like, oh, that was like two years ago. Maybe it was eight years ago. Like, dude, I'm old, old as hell. Yeah. So, and this is interesting. So quickly, let's sort of just talk about what we look for in a cash game. I think in, in a cash lineup, we want safety. We want guys that are going to have the ball that have high usage rate, um, that have a lot of opportunities for fantasy points. Uh, an easy way to do that is to roster point guards. And I think because of the, um, just sort of the, the distribution of, of pricing on, um, just among these sites, I think it's viable. Like, you know, in my model right now, I uh, just optimized using our optimizer uh, a lineup that, that was more cash based, and I'm getting three point guards in there. You know, at the the point guard yeah. spot, the yeah. guard spot, and the utility spot. So I, I think that's sort of the play today. If there's so many guys that are discounted, you know, obviously even with with, with sessions being one of those um, because of, of Kemba, I think it's a, a night where you definitely go two or three point guards and just get the safety of those guys. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's you know, like you have to and. That's a traditional um, you know, lineup construction on DK. You, you kind of always want to go at least two point guards uh, for the most case. But, yeah, lately with DK's pricing with centers, uh, consistently underpriced, you, you know, you throw a few centers in there. And then we have some, like, you know, multi-position eligibility with, with guys like Harden or, or you fit a stud in your utility or, or whoever. But, yeah, today's slate for sure makes up. I mean, you go Isaiah, who's value, and then you got to go Sessions. And then – you look at center, which is kind of a tougher position today, um, especially with them being questionable and you know boogie against Gasol, and nobody really standing out too much. That yeah, three point guards I think is a, a really good call for cash today. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we like a lot of those guys on DK. Moving on to FanDuel, I, I've, I still remain uh, pretty pretty firm in my stance. That I think Lowry is, is just a really awesome play there. So if you're going sort of a, another guy or just even other guys that sort of stand out um, among point guards today, whether they're on DK or FanDuel, um, you know, I, I think Sessions is still fine. He's definitely like a lock on DK. Um, I, he's he's obviously still very fine on Fanduel, but then you also have, I mean, like Sergio Rodriguez. I think is yeah. uh, going against the Lakers at, at uh, only five K. I think sort of enters that discussion as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then you have Dragic, who's been re- using a, just massive possessions, but going against. Uh, Chris Paul and the Clippers not an ideal matchup. Um, right. you, you know who who else stands out to you? I mean, like obviously we we always sort of recommend having at least some exposure to these studs like Chris Paul, even in, in bad matchups. But anyone else like really stand out to you other than the guys we mentioned and Lowry and those guys? Um, for cash, not really. I mean, Sergio at five K is just too cheap. Although you look at last game, I mean, assuming Embiid ends up playing, last game was interesting with that front court. We saw only 15 shot field goal attempts out of Joe Okafor and Joel Embiid, and then we saw 35 out of um, Sergio Rodriguez and Robert Covington. So I definitely don't expect that to happen again. Embiid was in a bit of foul trouble, uh, playing frustrated quite a bit, but you know, 5K is just too cheap for Sergio against the Lakers. So I think he's – right up there as a top three play at point guard. I'm probably higher on sessions than most, um, but I get it on Fandle. If you don't need to save there, you you don't have to. I mean, um, Sergio's not that much more. So you can spend up on one of those guys, Lowry, um, whoever. But but a lot of those top guys are more tournament plays. You know, Wall is more appealing to me on DK. Um, Definitely tournament only on FanDuel at his price. Right, right. Uh, you know, Beverly, like I mentioned, his price is kind of catching up to him. And mm-hmm. we have Sergio and Session, so I don't see the need to really go Beverly there. Um, who else we got? Uh, so, yeah, the rest are just tournament plays. So these guys are all within, like, you know, 1,000, 1,300 uh, of each other on FanDuel. How would you rank Sergio, uh, Sessions, and, and even I'll throw Pat Bev uh, in there? <sighs> For cash games, yeah. you would go sessions, but you know how would you how would you go to Sergio Pat Bev? Would you go Sergio over him? Yeah, I'd go Sergio. I'm like as of now, I'm. I mean, I'm probably trying to go Sergio and sessions. Okay, my two spots, but that could change kind of depending on how badly I want to go Jimmy Butler as my yeah small forward number one. Um, yeah. If I'm going Millsap and cash, you know, kind of who I'm going at center. So you're kind of picking your spots where you're going to spend and right. kind of limited um, outside of Harden, who we, who we want pretty bad. But so I think you can, you can like afford Lowry relatively easily. Yeah. It, roster construction is definitely interesting because, you know, just on, on the surface, I would much prefer, like if I'm paying up at, at either point guard or power forward for Lowry or Millsap, Lowry is pretty easy for me over Millsap, but, but the question is, is right. what's the opportunity cost going down? That's, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think you know, I prefer Lowry as well, most likely, but point guard, you have value, safe value, you know, Sessions starting point guard. Uh, you know, Session, the thing with Sessions is he has an extremely high assist percentage, you know, higher than, than Kemba anyway. So he's going to step in that starting role and, die like that's what he does and yeah i like the floor a lot there um with with his assist percentage on the season so mm-hmm. yeah we'll get into power forward soon with you know how how to emphasize Millsap because that's not a great position in terms of trusting guys really but we do have <laughs> Speaking of not really trusting guys, let's move to, to shooting guard. So we have Harden. We, we've discussed him. We won't get into him uh, too much any more than, than that. Uh, we definitely think that he's you know, playable in all contest formats for, for sure. Uh, but, you know, then we have <laughs> really tough um, shooting guard spot tonight. You know, I, we, we talked about DeRozan uh, in that match, I think, on, on DraftKings. He's – He's right up there. Like, if you're just looking for a nice floor, his his spot, it's tough if you know you want to get in some of these guys. But maybe Sessions allows you to um, to, to get up to DeRozan. I'm not really sure. Uh, well, what are your so what are your thoughts? You know that KCP is going to play. What are your thoughts on his you know minute load? And I mean at four six, 
uh, against Washington, if I knew he was going to play 35 minutes and be the same KCP, he'd be he'd be the lock for me. But what about for you? Yeah, it's yeah, 4600 for KCP is too cheap. I've been down on him since Reggie Jackson returned. You know, he's obviously a smidge worse than he was beginning of the season with Reggie now and starting lineup alongside him. But I mean, I'm not worried about the minute. He's confirmed playing right now. So I'm expecting 35 minutes. He played 35 minutes the last game. It's not a guy I'm really worried about with the minutes limit. Uh, He's very safe with those heavy minutes. It's more of a matter of, like, what's he going to produce for you? But on DK especially, you kind of compare him to the top options who are all expensive, and he's kind of the lone guy who's who's cheap, and you could say, okay, I'm getting a starter playing big minutes um, in a plus matchup. I mean, you, you think he's going to contribute enough. So he's definitely up there. I mean, DK is a, a, price, a site that's really tough on pricing overall, you know, your whole roster. So you're kind of definitely wanting these spots. And, and this one's just a matter of he's simply underpriced uh, by a good margin. And, you know, that, that immediately makes him an option. I don't, like, love it. I don't yeah. want to go him. I'd rather not, but he's certainly in the mix. I mean, you, you have to consider him and kind of play around with lineups with him to see what he gets you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's tough. So uh, this is tough for me as well. So, you know, I just used our on-off uh, tool to um, do, do this, uh, but to our um, Kemba thing just to figure out how Batum did last year yeah. with Kemba because I think you know we Sessions is sort of a must play and and last year you know the, the guy who was the the backup point guard Jeremy Lin yeah. one game yeah. without Kemba Jeremy Lin just crushed by he put up 38.8 yeah. uh, DK points succeeded value by 15.1 points but in that game and it's only a sample of one so this is the tough part Batum sucked. He put up only 23 DK points. He missed value by 6.1 points. So uh, Batum and, and Kim have always been sort of oddly correlated, like tied together in, in terms of just production and how the team plays. And that's just, I mean, just something that I've noticed watching Charlotte a lot. So, um, you know, like people are going to think that this is a, just a natural um, plus for Batum, but I, and, and I'm not basing this off of one game sample, but I, I think it's not quite as, as simple as that. Yeah, I don't want to base off one game sample either, especially with Jeremy Lin, an entirely different player than right. Ramon Session. So right. it's tough to look at the sample size when it's that small. Right. Uh, I like Batum. His price is kind of caught up. So it's not like you could just be like, okay, you know, this is a big spike for him. I'm going to plug him in. He's still relatively difficult to afford. Um, but I, I do think with Kemba off the court, he, he does see increased usage, I think a couple percentage points. Um, you know, Kemba led the team with, this year with 29% usage rate. So it's got to go somewhere. And Sessions you know, isn't really the, the aggressive point guard to really take all of that. So I think you know, the distribution will still be there. Um, but Toom has a high assist rate as well, um, you know, right below Kemba and um, Sessions for this season. So I don't expect anything major, uh, a leap for him, but I still do like him in general. I mean, I'd like him. Uh, for tournaments a lot, even with Kemba. So without, I think he pushes it more towards cash game, but it's still a matter of how you're going to afford him. And it's kind of, you know, do you go Mm -hmm. ACP and save, or or do you pay up for like Batum or DeRozan? Yeah, that's that's the question. Moving on to FanDuel, um, you know, I I think, uh, you know, just sort of guys who stand out, you know, Lou Williams at five six. Even even not in like super super heavy minutes, sort of stands out. Um, he's been down a little bit the last couple games, but uh, you know he has a, a really nice matchup, obviously against Philly here. Um, not not great defenses going at each other here in, in LA and Philly. Um, even though Philly's been a little bit better this year, um, but then the, the the guy that I'm curious your thoughts are is Giannis. Um, you know, I think so. I think he's an elite, elite pivot down from Harden in tournaments. You know, he's playing Chicago, which seems like a, uh, a negative matchup with with Jimmy. But uh, Giannis actually, I mean, the NBA has been doing these like weird, like team team back to backs. Yeah, really. I know. So yeah, weird. Off. Yeah, yeah. So he played Chicago last game, went off for fifty seven point three Fanduel points. He had thirty and fourteen, um, fourteen rebounds against a, a really good rebounding Chicago team. So. That was really impressive. Uh, didn't seem to be hindered by their defense at all. So, um, like, I, I don't think the savings is enough to, to go him over Harden in cash. 
but I think as a pivot down just to get a unique roster, I think his ceiling uh, is um, not not that much lower than Harden. So I really like him as a, as a tournament play tonight. Yeah, a tournament play for me, but I'm looking at more of like he just played these dudes last night, dropped 57. People are going to be on him more than I probably want to. He is on the second leg of back-to-back. Coming off mass minutes, he has a, a minus three point six plus. So are they? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's bad for all of them. Usually, typically, um, but a road back to back. I mean, he, yeah, four games he's had a road back to back, and yeah, a minus three point six plus minus, so fifty percent consistency percentage. And I think just people recency bias looking at the fifty seven. You know, like, I more look at you know, who Chicago has to defend him. Jimmy Butler's going to guard. It's like, I, I find it unlikely he'll drop 57 again, basically, um, the night after he, he puts up 57. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I agree. Drop down from Harden for sure. If, if that game, the Houston game, gets you know, way out of hands, then I like the value Giannis has with a, a kind of big price difference, really. Um, the guy I'm looking at on Fandle quite a bit is uh, Fournier. Fournier, that's yeah. this, the guy that I had circled. That's, yeah, yeah like that, that's a guy I'm, I'm comfortable going for sure. I think his price is fine. You know, it's a great spot. Orlando, I believe, has the second highest team total today. Uh, Vooch is back, but I don't, I don't think it's going to affect Fournier too much. You know, he won't be on the court with him for significant minutes. Um, but you look at a guy who has very safe minutes, uh, shoots the ball. You know he's been aggressive lately, so yeah, I like the floor that he presents, and then you know the upside's nice too. So he has the highest opponent plus minus tonight against the Nets. I mean, obviously the Nets yeah. are garbage, but they've been particularly garbage against shooting guards. Yeah. Uh, so plus, he's been at what like thirty-five uh, Fandle points in his last three. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. He he's he's pretty easy for me. A guy that I like a lot right. as well. Yeah. So like looking at right now on Fandle, I'm, you know, plugging in Harden and Fournier is what I'm doing. Fair enough. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on D Wade? I mean, back to back, obviously, stuff. Yeah, it is. I, th- I think I saw like a stat earlier where that had Wade's like uh, raw numbers on back to backs just over his career. They were so bad, just terrible. And I, I looked in our system, his you know plus minus was uh, insignificant on back to backs. But there's a matter of like he might rest. It's still, you know, he's sat. A, I think twice this season maybe just once um but that's a possibility but i think either way you know he's, he's tournament only for me i don't really want to cash him um on the back to back although dk you know I, well he's up to 7k there so yeah i think um I think yeah he's uh, sort of off for him tonight like low tournament I mean, so the thing with wade like he's been the most consistent player lately, like the last eight games. Or no, something. yeah, like I think if you're going to play it's him, I think, I think cash is fine. Uh, but like I, I would prefer Fournier. So, you know, like I, I just don't see myself going him because of the other options. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, the yeah. only other guy is that I am even like sort of looking at, but it's only just to like tell you no is Wes. I mean, going against <laughs> Wes Matthews going against. Oh uh, yeah, he's uh, been so good lately. But this the matchup against Utah is sort of a, a stay away from me. Yeah, I just I don't want anything to do with that Big Ten game. I already said the scores would be twenty nine to twenty four, so there are limited points if you look at any of those guys. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. I mean, I don't love the spot for Beal. Um, you know, Avery Bradley's been nice, but we have Isaiah Thomas back. Uh, you know, Lou Will, I think, with the big roster now, everybody's healthy. I'm not in love with. Uh, you have Giannis back to back, Wade back to back. Galloway is intriguing. Buddy Heald's intriguing, but you know, limited tournament exposure. So you, your pool is pretty narrow here, and I think it just emphasizes you know how much you really want to get Harding in there. Right. Okay, let's move on to the small four. We keep on trucking. Uh, so the uh, the decision, uh, not the decision of the slate, but an important one uh, is what to do with with Jimmy Butler. Uh, he really struggled. I mean, again, this is that game where they they just played uh, against yeah. Chicago Milwaukee. Yeah. yeah, and he really struggled. I mean, he shot six of sixteen, only put up thirty one point one Fando points. Just really struggled against Milwaukee. Um, so uh, you know, in a back to back against a team he just struggled with. Um, I think there's some risk here, um, especially at nine K. But then you look at the other options, and I mean, like, what, where else do you go? It's so bad, man. I mean, you could pick two cheap guys, I guess, but I don't know. Like Ariza and 
Yeah, I mean, I mean like, Tabo's been nice. Damari, yeah, Damari. Um, yeah. I mean, Jack and Jay is fine, yeah. Crowder's still under price. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to go one of these guys, if not two. So it's, it's really tough. I mean, a guy who I'm hoping is in play is Kelly Oubre if Markeith is out. We saw him go 40 minutes last start. So if Markeith, who's a game-time decision, ends up getting ruled out, uh, Oubre is a guy um, for sure that I'm considering you know, 4K on FanDuel. So that would be very nice if uh, that comes And that would let you get up to Butler for sure. Yeah, and the thing with Butler is, like, I love him for tournaments. It just kind of makes me like him even more that he struggled last night yeah. against his team, playing backs back, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's a machine. He, it's not like I'm worried about his fatigue right. or you know, not playing heavy minutes again. And then you have the upside if, if Wade doesn't play heavy minutes on the second one back to back. So, yeah. oh, there's a guy I like a lot. You just mentioned, like, he did so bad last night. He still put up 31 on this slate with these options. 31's I, real nice. I can live with that if that's his yeah. form. You yeah. get that 50 ceiling and, and you're more likely 40. So, um, But there's a guy you know I, li- I like a lot. It's just kind of a matter of where you're saving. It, right. You know, it depends kind of on – I mean, point guard and power forward are big with um, – you know, if you're going like Millsap and Lowry or something, you, you're not going Butler with Harden. So yeah, it's kind of come down to where you're prioritizing. I, I, so I don't think the the matchup or, or I don't think Butler's poor game last night was like just random. Like I think that he like like Giannis I think is one of the better wing defenders in the league for sure. I think he's taking a huge defensive leap on top of his offensive leap and um, really like his length just gives Butler problems. But uh, I mean that said, like just Butler is safe. I mean even if you get thirty five, like you, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like if we had a deeper small forward pool of top tier guys, Butler wouldn't be a consideration to me really. But he's the lone guy. I mean, you throw out Gordon Hayward in that Big Ten game, and you don't really have anybody uh, with with a massive ceiling. So it's tough. It, you know, I like paying up for the floor. Is basically what it comes down to. Right. So uh, this is a quick aside, and we'll get, we'll jump into power forward. I was listening to uh, the Dunked On podcast with with Nate Duncan and uh, Danny Larue. They were talking. They did their like best prospects under twenty three, um, and they had they had Anthony Davis number one. Uh, I, I'd encourage you to listen. It's a good pod. Anthony Davis number one. Uh, they had Cat number two, but Nate was talking about how he really thought about putting Giannis number two over Cat and just how how dominant yeah. Giannis has been. I mean, he's been a top yeah. fifty guy in terms of PER and, and RPM and probably the best player uh, or the better player of the two right now. It's hard to argue cat ceiling, but uh, made me think about a question. And obviously this is sort of, uh, this is tough with Dirk, but is Giannis like this is his career. He's what, he's 22 years old right now. Yeah. Uh, he just turned 22 last week, <laughs> last week on December 6th, he turned 22. Is he, is he currently on track for the, for the, for the best career ever for a foreign player? For an international player, I mean, outside of Boris Diaw, my main man, um, yeah. he's got a chance. I mean, it depends. I mean, Akeem Olajuwon, I think if you if you consider that, yeah, sure, sure, that's like a, a borderline one. But um, I, Dirk won the MVP, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Dirk's you know the 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 guy you compare everybody to for international players. But I think Giannis has MVP upside. I really do. I do too. I mean, it's yeah, it's crazy. Dirk's you got longevity. Obviously not this year. Um, he's got a ring, so it's tough, like speculating. But as far as just um, talent, like yeah, I think Giannis has a ceiling for sure. That's it, at least comparable to Dirk, if not even more. So Giannis is over a year younger than Buddy Hield. I know. I, yeah, I still I laugh at the Buddy Hield pick. I think every day. Buddy Hield actually turns uh, he turns twenty three tomorrow. So happy future birthday, Buddy Hield. We'll be thinking about you. Yeah, that's yeah, buddy. It's crazy. We're talking about all this young talent in the league, and like Buddy Hield's older than all of them. All cat, like, and be all yeah. these guys. It's just so. So when they talked about the CBA, the CBA was just you know extended, and they were talking yeah. about how they uh, wanted to push for this like zero and two rule, where uh, players could come out right out of high school, or if you don't, then you have to stay two years. Sort of like MLB does with I believe zero and three. I think is is how MLB does. Um, and they were talking about how they don't want to do that. And it's mostly just protecting the teams from taking guys that are coming out of high school. And my, my, that's so like, my thought was like, you're still, you're taking Buddy Heald after four years of college. Like, how are you not making mistakes even in his current standings, you know? Yeah, it's bad, man. I mean, 
yeah, it's bad. I think the, a lot of teams are catching up and getting better across all sports, but like right. see a mistake like that and similar scenarios. And it's kind of like they took him over Jamal Murray, I think was bad. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of bad, like even at the time though, it's like, that's a bad pick. You kind of just know, um, but he hit five threes last night. So whatever, just the people that are on team buddy. He's amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, Giannis, Giannis for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's has, has a massive ceiling there. Um, yeah. But I, I did forget, just going back to point guard really quick, I want to shout out uh, Elf, Elf for Payton. For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We do have Vooch back on the second unit, but I don't think that really stops his ceiling. But he's, he's had a massive ceiling lately, so I think he at least deserves some term exposure. I think even after he went off, he was only like 6% on in the FanDuel stand. It's a guy I think in some time. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I don't, yeah, do you got anyone else for small forward you're kind of considering? Hmm. I mean, not 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 a whole lot here. Like, I mean, like, so it's like. Um, I mean, I, like I the stuff this guys we've talked about. Like, I like Ariza um, a little bit, but he's like more cash than tournament, so I'd have low ex, low exposure. I mean, like Harrison and Gordon Hayward are, are like going against each other. I I, I don't mind top, but like, it's like where where are my tournament plays here? Like, where are no, the guys? I'll give you the like, tournament play. We can talk about my boy Aaron Gordon. So yeah, so he's he's uh. Um, he's small forward, power forward on DraftKings, right? Yeah, he's small forward on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And small forward on Fandle, Fandle, small forward only on Fandle. Yeah, yeah, man. He's he's the him and Kelly Oubre. Those are those like are the two like best tournament high ceiling plays. Oubre is if Markeith is out, Oubre is cash play. Cash, sure. yeah. uh, I still think he's uh, high ceiling on top of that though as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Gordon though is tough. Like, I've been on him a few times in tournaments. One time in particular, way too heavy. And I think he got, like, 11 or something. Well, it depends on whether he's going to – like, what position he's going to play. Like, it's – like, he plays – you know, they play a little bit smaller. And he's just, like – he's yeah. – he had, what, like, seven dunks last game? Just, like, we're – Yeah, man. It's like, so, I hope – I mean, I know last game's not necessarily indicative because Umba Mute was out and Chris Paul was on Aaron Gordon a lot. So, that's an eight-inch difference. I mean, whether Rivers – you know, either of them, it's just a, a massive advantage to get Aaron Gordon the ball in that spot. And that's what they did. So part of me is like, you know, he's not going to face another six foot defender. And he also played 40 minutes. Yeah, for sure. But the other part's like, okay, he looks good. So like maybe you yeah. should give him the ball near the basket more. I don't know. It's just an idea. You know, you don't want him taking jump shots. So the guy that won the, uh, or should or really should have won the NBA dunk contest? You think should like should, should be near the basket? That's that's your take. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we talked about was it last pod where you yeah. dropped the stats of how limited he was in field goal attempts near the basket and like three, yeah, three uh, is the I mean, moment. I mean, that increased obviously, yeah. but it, it shows like if you play him at the if you play him at the four and you use him as a big man and put him in the, the pick and roll and just let him attack yeah. the basket, right. he's dominant. He really is. Right. So. Part of me is like, okay, I like that they saw what he could do. But the other part's like, well, he, he Chris Paul was, you know, posting him up and he was alley ooping over Chris Paul. So it's like, I'm in the middle, but it's at least enough to have my attention in terms. And also, like, there's absolutely no guarantee that the coaching staff is going to exactly. play him more than yeah. ten minutes tonight. Yeah. So yeah, it, I mean, obviously, a tournament play only. Um, yeah. But I think he deserved mention. And then a couple other guys. I mean, Covington. I think warrants some term exposure, but you know, if, if Embiid starts, I, don't, I see the game going a lot differently than last game did with the distribution of field goal attempts. Right, you know, right. Two guys in John and Embiid that have high usage rates, so I don't expect Covington to take he take like twenty shots. I think uh, so. I'm not expecting that game, but you know, you do have that ceiling at the same time that you look at some of these other guys with limited ceilings who are like cash plays, and you kind of pivot some of these other guys under owned who have flashed high ceilings and Covington's kind of in that mix. Like Ariza, for example, eight straight over 20. It's not pretty, but like, you know, it's more of a cash play. Um, right, option. right. And then you got any love for the wall? Dang has been uh, resurrected. I don't know. I don't really either. All right, let's get on the power forward, the yeah. off the day conversation. So power forward is, is sort of another tough one. We talked about Millsap and sort of the opportunity cost of coming down. Um, so I, we talked about Nate Davis in that game. I think he's uh, you know, he's fine really in any contest format. The, the issue is, you know, 
where how else you're going to build your lineup. So I think if you like if you just absolutely really want Davis in, in whatever contest you're in, I, I'm not going to uh, to scoff at that. Uh, but I do I do agree with the Millsap cash call. And, and then if you're sort of going down a little bit from there, like the the next guy that I probably feel comfortable with is Jabari. Well, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm big, I'm big on Jabari. I mean, he even came out. I know this is highly disputed among some NBA guys of, of whether motivation or um, you know these outside factors are really a thing and I do think they are I don't think they're really predictive anyways Jabari said he was playing with extra motivation against Chicago he's from Chicago I was playing again he's playing in Chicago, in Chicago tonight. Uh, yeah, I like, I'd, I'd wrote that as a note that he's playing in Chicago yeah yeah and like I don't know I, don't, I normally kind of joke about that stuff more so but like Jabari's been playing well anyways uh, it doesn't with, matter yeah that's just an extra bonus it's a favorable matchup yeah actually Chicago has been the most favorable matchup to opposing power for is 4.6 uh, plus minus yeah. at least 15 points. So yeah. Uh, yeah, like Jabari stands out a lot to me um, on, a, on yeah. a spot where you might not be able to pay up for Millsap. Even if you do, Jabari is worth a power forward to look. And on FanDuel at 6'3", he's like a lock. Yeah, agree. So yeah, I'm looking at him. And then like if you, if you need the extra motivation to roster him, you can look at the Chicago angle. Um, Right. So yeah. it, gets, it gets into a big thing of like game plan and like, are they really going to drop more plays for him? Like, why is nah, it? Yeah, other yeah. Games? Blah, blah, blah. But like, I don't know. I mean, it's basketball. There are five dudes out there. It's not like inconceivable to think that right. he's going to attack more aggressively. Right. I love that family in the crowd, I'm sure. Yeah, it's yeah. his homies. I mean, it's yeah, just- I, I don't play guys because of Narrative Street, really, but I. Like he's an he's a amazing play independent of that, yes. and then like it's just the icing on the cake. It makes it more fun, yeah. Yeah, so they bump up his exposure like from <laughs> you know thirty percent in tournaments to thirty two or something. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah, another guy I think you know I like who's in the mix for cash for me, maybe more tournament, but is Trevor Booker. Uh, been rebounding sure. machine lately. Put up eighteen boards the other day, um, thirteen. I mean, he's been rebounding like crazy, and you look at Orlando. 24th in rebound percentage on the season, 29th in their last 10 games. Um, you're looking at a guy like, I, I don't love the minutes limited, um, the low usage on the offensive end. Um, so there's not like too much to work with there outside of rebounds, but I, I feel like on this slate, you're kind of taking a risk on a lot of these guys anyway. So Booker's in the mix for me, and, and I, I like him quite a bit as a tournament player. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I mean, if we're sort of looking at other tournament plays, I think we've sort of like – Davis, Jabari, Millsap. I think those are the guys you really want to like hone in on, especially the the latter two in, in cash. Uh, a, a guy that I, I think is is right there. I mean, he's more tournament, but I really like him to tournament play. Is, is Ilyasova? I mean, if he's going to play thirty minutes against the Lakers, he's put up like massive, massive ceilings in the last couple games. Like, I think he's worth definitely some tournament exposure against what is the worst defense in the league. Yeah, I don't know. Are I'm you worried probably... about Nerlens? Yeah, like, I mean, I, yeah, it's just a front court, you know, I'm not in love with, with the starting yeah, front court. Yeah. Uh, jaw, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not digging digging him a lot, really. Sure. Uh, yeah, like a little worried about Nerlens and, you know, it, I mean, if it beats out, I'll look at it differently, uh, especially if Illy starts and Jaw starts at center. Mm-hmm. And I'll like him quite a bit. Um, and, I mean, it's not a good sign that it'd be – missed shoot around and got downgraded to questionable so i'd say for now it would probably be more surprised than not if mb plays so i'm kind of leaning on him sitting so in that case um yeah at least up there for sure just if we get confirmation yeah for sure yeah I'll, I'll, yeah it was sort of with that that caveat for sure uh i mean any love i mean sort of like really fringe guys now that I, that i don't hate uh, especially if they just have some upside with minutes marvin has been really bad marvin williams but yeah i mean like it, with, with kemba out you know maybe batum and him step up a little bit uh a little bump in usage rate tobias has been bad but you know maybe he yeah. bounces back julius randall's i mean this is the trend so of guys that have been bad. really bad but yeah. probably going to play 30 ish minutes and has some upside in this matchup against Philly so I think these guys are worth at least some some looks in, in terms of oh they are I mean Randall is a guy I was looking at too and I'm just like he's playing good minutes solid minutes and he's just doing so bad but like we know that he has a ceiling so I guess like I wouldn't be quick to just write him off looking at his last 
three games or whatever and be like, oh, you know, just he's not there, his ceiling's not there, or whatever. But like, yeah, if you look at a spot where it beads out, you know, by you've seen the numbers of Philly without a beat on the court, and their defense is I think 29th in the league. So it's a great spot for him down low if if he's you know kind of squaring off a bit against a, a jaw led front court on the defensive end. So Randall for me, especially with, with low ownership. Uh, makes perfect sense to have kind of heavy exposure in tournaments. I got here's a, a just a, a little overpriced, uh, probably, but why is it, why isn't he like at least semi interesting in cash? Uh, to Michael Green, I mean, going a really nice so, matchup against Sacramento. He's been so bad. It's, but, it's, but he's yeah. been no, he's been really good. He's just been really bad in his last two. But they were it was a back brutal back to back against Cleveland. I mean, like that matchup against Tristan is like yeah. maybe the worst matchup for him in the NBA. Probably, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. He's in the same the same mold as the other guys, like Tobias too, and sure. all these guys are kind of just disappointing. Um, I don't think you'd need to go them in cash. When you, you, know, you can just spend a little bit more on Jabari. But like, if if Jamichael hadn't, if he had just rested the last two games against Cleveland, he'd, he'd be a, he'd be a cash guy. He he'd be up there, yeah. So I mean, it's it's sort of recency bias, I think, that's sort of taken us off him a little bit. I, like I don't think you need to go him because Jabari's you know just six thirty, but I, I'm saying that he's he's not like the most awful play in the world. No, he's not. And then we gotta give a shout out to Blake Griffin for a tournament play yeah. um, as well. I don't think we touched up on Chris Paul either, but both those guys I like as tournament plays because the projected low ownership for both. So I think you definitely want a piece of some Blake tonight. It's, sure, not, for sure. it's not a scary matchup for him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so moving on to center, um, you know, like obviously the, the Embiid news is going to just completely change, change, change center after we record this. So they definitely keep up with the NBA news feed, but uh, just sort of independent of that. And, you know, we you know, have like, you know, Ja and be like those guys are interesting if one plays the other, you know. Um, how bad are you going to try to get Orford and I mean, uh, Andre Drummond into lineups on DK where he's only 7 6 going against Washington? Yeah, I mean, you look at the numbers this year, Washington's been very generous to opposing centers. Um, but I, I kind of look at last year too, and Gortat was a difficult matchup for Drummond last year. He, he underwhelmed pretty heavily on the offensive end, Drummond in four matchups versus them. So I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to just like lock him in on DK. I know his price is too cheap. Um, I do expect a bounce back on the offensive end after last game. I think he only got three field goal attempts, I believe. Um, so I think he'll be more involved, but I look at kind of the matchup with Gortat and the sample size you have of, of those two. And like, I don't love it. So it's not a spot where I'm like, that's my only option. I'm going Drummond because he's underpriced and because Washington gives up a lot of centers this season. So I'm not necessarily locking him in, but at the same time, it's really difficult position to kind of grasp, grasp tonight, um, especially with the Embiid news. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough to find like a cash game play, at least right now with, with, yeah. with Embiid up in the air. Um, I mean, what other, what other guys are you looking at? I mean, is – is Gasol? I mean, I know Gasol is is priced up now, but yes, yeah. seven. I mean, yeah, it's the problem so is like, nice. right. seven six for Drummond and seven nine. Like that, those are just two guys that I feel really good about. But I mean, right. like, can you get up to them? Is the problem? Yeah, so I'm probably you know not on the popular side of this, but I think I would rather go Gasol. Um, than Drummond on DK. I don't. I know. I don't think that's an awful take by any means. Yeah, I, I think that they're they're both. I think they're both elite tournament plays. The question is, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just like where do where do you go? I mean, do you have to pay down today because if you want to get some of these yeah. other? Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, it's really tough. Um, it's mostly just a lot of guys who I really like in tournaments, um, and it's kind of similar on Fanduel too, like. You know, who, who you feel comfortable enough cashing? Like, I'm, I mean, that really just depends on the Embiid news. You know, I mean, that's, that's, um, that's, the, that's the problem. I don't think at this point recording, I don't even think I com I'm comfortable with him. Not going through shoot around and getting downgraded is like you know, a really really bad sign for his status come game time. So if he doesn't play, I mean, what, what are you doing there? So if he doesn't play, we have Jaw. Right minutes limit so I'm kind of I guess just off both 
No, no, no. I'm saying I, I'm on John. Okay, you're on John. Yeah. I have a minute. So he's fifty one hundred um, playing against the Lakers. It's like the yeah, best he, matchup. He's, he's the he's the value play on, on center uh, for sure. Yeah. So, but he's he's a little pricey on DK, which sort of makes it interesting. Like it's not like that much more to get up to Gasol, you know, into drama. Right. It's like yeah, thousand or so. <sighs> yeah, that's that's tough. I think on Fanduel though, it's fairly easy. If when it be, uh, yeah, yeah. Out, you go job 5,100 and don't think twice. Right. I agree. That's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm hoping for at this point. And I think it's leading that way. I mean, you get into the thing of you're likely going to get another like coach saying, Oh, he'll give it a go or he'll, and beat will try to play or whatever. And it just kind of kills everything. Cause now you don't feel safe enough with Embiid, And then you also have him cutting in the usage of jaw too. So it's like, just ruins everything. So I'm really hoping that's not the case. Well, what's, so what's your take on this Orlando front court situation? Um, obviously, you know, the, the Vooch news, but Bismack has been playing like 35 minutes and he's four, six on, on FanDuel. I mean, he's not projected for a ton of minutes in our models right now, but what are yeah. your thoughts on him? He seems like a fairly decent price if he was going to play, play the heavy minutes like he has been. Yeah. But I mean, we, we have Vooch back now, so I, I can't, yeah. You project the same amount of minutes for him. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I like him considerably more with Fuchs out. So, so does it just does it take him completely off, or like even? I mean, like even a tournament? Kind of. Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. Like, I mean, the value's still there, the price, but it's not a spot where I'm probably going to target in cash. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm not going him in tournaments. Um, yeah. I mean, the the matchup of the night for me. Uh, the most exciting for sure is Whiteside and DeAndre. I don't know if you saw Whiteside kind of throw shade at DeAndre. Whiteside throw shade at everyone, which is why he's the absolute greatest. He's the best, man. But yeah, he, um, what did he say? He said, uh, all DeAndre can do is catch lobs. That's it. And Whiteside was like, I can shoot, I can block, uh, I do a lot. All he does is catch lobs. <laughs> so I can't wait for this matchup down low. I like, I mean, I like both, obviously, for tournaments, but I kind of really like um, DeAndre uh, in this spot. You know, we've talked several times about how favorable it is playing centers against Whiteside, and DeAndre is not necessarily that traditional center who attacks the rim and, and gets a lot of field goal attempts to really abuse Whiteside because you're not really going to abuse him on the glass, but the Heat uh, get their shots blocked more than anybody in the league. On average, they lead the league in block shots per game to opposing teams. So you look at a guy like DeAndre who has that block upside um, you know, with the double-double upside, and that's a spot. And with you know, Whiteside just blatantly calling him out and saying, all you do is catch lobs. I mean, it's going to put a little fire under him, I think. And for tournaments, it's a spot where I'm really liking DeAndre. And then conversely, you look at Whiteside and the Clips um, – get their shots blocked by far the least in the league. So for Whiteside, I think that block appeal kind of uh, goes down a lot for me. Sure. Yeah. Uh, using our trends tool, uh, so Whiteside has played the clips three times in the last couple of years. Uh, he has a really nice uh, plus 7.28 plus minus, but he's actually missed value in his last two games. The Really the, the big one is he was priced, this was when he was like just coming out of the D league two years ago. He was like 4K and put on like 55 that's, those were the best days, man. Those, they, those were your glory days. Like rost, rostering yeah. Whiteside on at like four K. <laughs> that was that was your heyday, man. Yeah, yeah. We don't have those days anymore. But yeah, I mean, it's a spot I'm definitely intrigued by on both sides. But I'm going to take the uh, DeAndre route, and uh, yeah, I'm on that for 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 sure as well. Uh, Boogie, I I think I think sort of just being a little underweight on him is probably the move here. Uh, I'm going to be very underweight on him. I mean, I, I don't think he'll be too highly owned, so. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, any other guys that we're looking at here? I mean, we have, uh, we have like, Gobert against Dallas, but I, I agree that it's not, not a game we're, we're really looking at. We, we mentioned Howard that we liked quite a bit in this match. Yep. Um, yeah. so I think he's a really nice tournament play. Um, you know, I think, I think Horford um, is – is fine. I, I don't really love him, though. I mean, I prefer a lot of these other guys in tournaments, so I'll probably have really low exposure to him, um, on, at least on FanDuel. On DraftKings, where he's 6'3", I think he's really, really intriguing as a tournament play. Yeah, absolutely. So, to sum it up, I mean, 
FanDuel, I'm hoping to play Jaw at 5-1 in cash if Embiid is ruled out. Um, DK, I mean, I guess you're looking at Drummond, who's underpriced, uh, potentially Marc Gasol, who's just 300 more. I mean, Horford's only 6,300 there. That's really nice, too. So. Yeah, well, Horford's a guy I'd rather have in cash anyway. So right. uh, if I was going to go him, uh, I think I think he's a, he, he's in the conversation for DK Cash, uh, but I don't like him for anything, really, on FanDuel. Agree, yeah. So the two sides are just really different with pricing, uh, but, especially yeah. as uh, but I, I'd, I'd like to get up to Drummond if I could. But I, I don't mind going down to Horford if I had to at 6'3". It's really nice. For sure. Yeah, so yeah. it's probably a thing where you'll you kind of preserve shape, that. shape up the rest of your team first and kind of yeah. see the options and ranges of guys you can put in a center and what it does to the rest of your team. But I agree. Exactly. There are guys that I'm fine settling with. Um, mm -hmm. like Horford, for example. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's too cheap. He's just too cheap. So on DK, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Any any uh, any Brolo love at all? Like, when there? A little. I mean, yeah. It's tough. Just the minutes. It's really really yeah. tough. Yeah. So. Yeah. I always have some Brolo love though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously, he's one of those guys with high ceilings. Uh, you know, if he gets thirty five and goes for like thirty and fifteen, it's not out of the realm. Um, and Orlando is. You know, they, they've been really up and down defensively this year. They got yeah. – they were, like, last place, and they got the third. Now they're middle of the pack. And just, like, depending on how much boost – like, they're sort of tough uh, matchup to analyze. But Brolo definitely has some upside for sure. For sure. Any last guys or do you want to end up there? No, nah, that's it. I mean, the big news is just paying attention to NB sure. status and, you know, play it, play it by ear after that. Sure. Okay. Well, we will end it there. Thank you, guys. For listening, uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, just a quick show note, uh, we're going to have the pod on Monday next week, uh, as usual, but we're not going to break down games. We're going to do a mailbag of sorts. Uh, so we're going to answer user questions, strategy, uh, NBA, to, or really whatever you guys have questions about for, for Daily Fantasy NBA. Um, you know, if, you, if you've made it to the end of this podcast and want to shoot us a question, go ahead. We'll also tweet out. Um, you know, uh, a tweet saying send in your questions, but uh, get prepared for that. Good luck, and, and I hope you guys have a good weekend. Yeah, no questions are off the board for me, so feel free to ask anything. And yeah, definitely good luck tonight. Um, have a good weekend as well.